Speaking of being mad, how many more uh, ex-WWE employees or independent contractors, I should say, are, are mad today than were yesterday? What are they doing? The, how many people? Was it eight more from the main roster? Uh, I'm counting the names now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight names I have here. Correct. Oh, and did did you hear that? Remember when, back when we were trying to watch M NXT and actually were watching NXT before it got unsalvageable and the thousand year old uh, Asian or mystical Chinese lady or whatever, Mei Ying, not Mei Young, but that was with Boa and Xia Li, the mis that everybody was afraid of. You remember that, right? Of course, how could I ever Mysterious that? never, never been unmasked or never got the exact story of how this ancient Chinese secret came to be or whatever, right? Guess what they did? I don't know. <laughs> what did they do? They didn't fire her. They just changed her gimmick. They dropped the fucking thousand-year-old Chinese woman thing, and she's now just a regular wrestler. But they never actually said that was that. They just dropped the whole goddamn thing. With the same name? No, different name and everything. Okay. Well. Just, just no, we, we're not doing that anymore. No, not even a payoff to that bit. That's like when they cancel your favorite episodic series before they get to the fucking conclusion where you find out who done it or what happened or whatever. I think they did that to that fucking dome show. Remember several years ago under the dome? I wanted to find out what the fuck, how that dome got there, what they were going to do about it and how everybody was going to get out of it. And I don't think they ever fucking did before they canceled it. I don't even know what you're talking about. Under the Dome, it was a TV show where suddenly, one day in this small town somewhere in America, a dome, an invisible but dome, just appeared over, and you couldn't get out of it, and nobody could get out of town. You couldn't dig under it, you couldn't fly over it. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't, you know, like that. George Clinton type of shit. Under the Dome, you don't remember that show. I do not. Well, the thousand-year-old Mae Young is going to have a guest spot on that show when they start shooting again. Perhaps I don't remember because of all that George Clinton shit. And that might be possible. Uh, but anyway, who'd they fire this week? Well, Jim, the biggest name at the top of the list, WWE has released John Morrison. Well, and it makes sense because they just fired Frankie. Or I should call her Taya Valkyrie now, again. Uh, which was insane. Again, I've, I mentioned with her, she was different than all the other girls. She had experience. She had a different look and a different style. And she looked like something. And she could talk. And she had the charisma. And they bring her in and push her like Paris Hilton. And then, and then push her out the door like fucking Lindsay Lohan. Um, with Morrison... Again, the guy's still in tremendous shape. He can work. He's got a personality. They've just they've tied him to that fucking Miz forever. Um, it's you know, and I mean, he's obviously he's been booked by the WWE, so probably maybe no better, no worse than anybody else. Certainly not well, but I don't see why you can't find something for that guy to do, especially when he's still in that kind of shape and that youthful with that much experience and obviously a quality employee. What do you think he'll be Johnny rampage or Johnny dynamite? Oh boy. I hope he gets finished with that altogether of uh, changing his name every week. Like he's trying to stay ahead of the law. Uh, that <laughs> Because you can't establish an identity based on that. And that's, they, you know, anyway, I can't see why. Again, you said Tony Khan can't hire everybody, but we have no evidence of that. So far, he acts like he can. And by the same time, somebody, um, it was AEW Botches, the account on Twitter, tweeted the length of time that it's been since we've seen certain people on the actual television program, they're hidden on the YouTube show or whatever the fuck. And Sonny Kiss, Jelly Nutella, some of the, you know, the 
ridiculously, egregiously outlaw indie talent, not ready, never will be ready, that they signed at the start of this thing. They've they've cleared their television program of, but since they've brought in legitimate talent. At some point, those contracts are going to be coming up and obviously will not be renewed because unless to quote Carrie Silken to me one time, what am I running here? Make a wish? If Tony Khan thinks he's going to support every aspiring wrestler, you know, in, in the world, then maybe he won't let those contracts lapse, but one would think he would. And you're upgrading. There's upgrades available. There's been upgrades available every few months for the last what year or so that the WWE mainly has provided to him. So they have handed him um, a, a lot, a large part of the quality guys they've got on the AW roster now. And I I see no reason why to think they're going to quit doing that. So I, I definitely think Morrison would be a fucking addition to AEW or anybody else. He's, you know, he's worked everywhere. I'm not saying he's going to be in the main event of WrestleMania or the main event of All Out or All In or Full Gear or whatever, but he's certainly better than a lot of guys in every company right now. Well, another somewhat of a surprise. I mean, I know they cut B-Fab last week, Jim, but <laughs> Isaiah Swerve Scott, Top Dalla, a.k.a. AJ from The Treasure Show, yeah. and Ashanti V. Adonis have been cut from WWE. I don't know whether if this is the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing or if it's, you know, two different heads up the same ass clunking into each other. They they put these this group together and they run them all the way through developmental and then they launch them on the main roster. And as soon as they do, they take the girl, which because it's three guys and one girl, she got a lot of attention. They take her out of the group and then fire the rest of the group the next week. What the fuck? They just started fucking, what, six weeks ago? And this guy was the, one of the guys was the host of their A&E show. How do they, how do they go from, we want you not only to be, uh, you're in developmental as a wrestler, we want you to host the, the A and E treasure show. And then we're going to put you in a group that we're going to push to the moon and make records and give videos to and blah, blah, blah. And as soon as you start on the main roster, we're going to fire all of you. That's what I give that. They gave them so much time on two different shows. It makes no sense why they would do this. <laughs> what the hell is this? I, I, I I mean, if what has changed in the last six weeks that you wouldn't even since you've already debuted these people on the show, and now you say, well, I really changed my mind. I got buyer's remorse, whatever. Spend three months getting somebody else over on, you know, at their fucking expense and then fire them, for fuck's sake. It's not like you're paying them to wrestle, so just have them start losing instead of winning. But don't just, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Somebody's going to clip that audio. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. That may be something aligned with WWE going forward, that statement, but another name released, Tegan Knox. Well, I hate it for him. Her, she was in NXT. We've watched oh. her many times. Yeah, that's right. Well, I hate it for her. Drake Maverick, once again released. You know, and I've said this before. I've met this young man. He's 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 a great kid. He's dedicated. He worked at LVW. He was in Impact. He's been everywhere. Um, he I'm sure he works very hard. He's very dedicated. It's just a size issue, as I can't imagine that anybody else of that size has worked for the WWE that long ever in its history because his Drake is smaller than Mysterio, right? I think so. Or certainly at least thickness, if not height. Yeah. I never thought of it before, but I think um, so. so I'm, you know, I mean, then all uh, uh, platitudes to him that he got away with it this long, but I've, I've just, I've never been able to 
see Vince McMahon saying, wait a minute, this is a wrestler? He just, he's small. And that wasn't going to fly in that company, especially. The other names, I'm not sure if they would really register with you. Shane Thorne and Jackson Riker. Um, actually, Shane Thorne was part of a tag team that we brought to Ring of Honor a couple of times about 10 years ago. And I'm trying to say, Nichols and Haste. They're Australian, I believe, or at least one of them was. And I'm trying to as I blurt this out as I think about it, but the point is they were a real good tag team. And uh, Delirious had seen them on tape, and we brought them in for a couple of matches. And I think there was a, I think the biggest thing was there had been a situation with more fucking visas and international talent with all the trouble we were having with trying to get anybody fixed up like that. And that's the reason why we didn't move forward with them. But um, I'm pretty sure that's the same guy, and I've seen him work and. I was a fan, but they've done little or nothing with him. And the other guy, wasn't he the one that got in trouble because he's a big Trump sucker and blurted out something in support of the mango Mussolini at, at a wrong or inappropriate time, and he got a lot of heat for it? That sounds right, but I don't remember. I can't remember what the particulars were. But so already, I don't care whether they push him off a cliff or not. Well, those are the releases. I mean, just wrapping this up, it seems like it's a monthly thing now, or every few weeks, where they're cutting a large amount of people. What the hell are they doing over there? I, you know, again, I think it's just that, and you tweeted out something that I retweeted, how long is it before the WWE starts investigating computer-generated wrestlers so we, you know, they don't have to deal with human beings? I think the new regime... The new business people, Nick Khan, all the executives and minions and things that he's hired have, and Vince, whatever's in Vince's mindset, if he can be convinced that this is the wave of the future, we're an even bigger business now and more professional, and this is the way we should deal with these things. Wrestlers are interchangeable. Train them, use some, keep a few megastars, and the rest of them we can just work through, because what the fuck? That's I think that's the way they think, and that's why they're fine. Let Tony Khan sign all that he wants and spend all his money, because we'll make more, and who gives a shit? And they're both arrogant, and also, you know, with the the quality or lack thereof of all the TV shows that WWE is producing, it's not that they're, they look low budget. It's not that they're shittily shot or that it's some fault of their, there's some, you know, fly by night company. It's that they don't still and never have since Kevin Dunn crawled out from under his rock and into that company. They've never understood how important the wrestling and the wrestlers are. They've always been, we look like network television. Yeah, you do. We've got this huge office building and we're going to get a bigger one. We got this great studio. We got all this infrastructure and we have these wonderful marketing people. But ultimately, and it used to be when you, when you had a smaller group like Vince McMahon, Pat Patterson, you know, the Jack Lanza's, the ex wrestler agents, that era, the 80s and 90s, there was more respect to the guys in the ring. But now all those people are gone. Nobody has any respect for the guys in the ring except for, um, you know, the lowly producers who used to be wrestlers, but they're not in Vince's inner circle like Lanza and Patterson and George Steele and all those guys. And everybody else is a fucking modern nitwits that think that you can train somebody to be a wrestler in six months and it's, and then blah, blah, blah. And then, and I don't think that Vince necessarily would have the same warmth of feeling or respect that he has, that he had for some of the guys in the eighties and nineties, because he was used to looking at the undertaker and Bret Hart and, you know, Steve Austin and it, on down the line. And now he's seeing like what a lot of us see a lot of kids that are just happy to be there and are scared to say boo to a goose. And, 
and are intimidated by the whole process. And there was something to be said about the guys that came in from the territories in the 80s and 90s, especially, and when they were convinced they were somebody and could be somebody else, you know, they might be problem children or they might be model employees, but they didn't walk around telling Vince every 15 minutes how overwhelmingly happy they were to just be allowed to be there. And that may make a difference with him. Well, we shall see what happens and we'll see who's fired next week on As the World Turns.